But moving on to the positives. The positives, the positives, the positives. Number one, of course, the positives, right? The space itself. There's no denying that Burkine is number one, the legitimate best club in the world I've been to from everything that they do with it. Like, you know, going in, in general, I think the whole Q thing, even though I, I spoke smack about how they should probably be, if you're waiting four hours plus, they should probably have a pro procedure or protocol in place where they can maybe go down the line and identify people who they probably wouldn't let in anyway and just say, hey, you might as well just leave now because we're not going to let you in um, just so you can go and continue your night elsewhere. That probably be a good thing to do so they don't have to, so you're not waiting right until you get to the door for them to then end up turning you away. But I still think that whole trepidation of having to wait in the queue behaving yourself not wanting to be seen like you're too drunk or too high not talking when you get closer to the to the door all of those things really kind of add to the overall ambient atmosphere once you get in there because i think much like a really amazing um uh light exhibition that you might go to in an, in an art gallery somewhere where maybe you walk into one part of the room and you're kind of blindfolded or you hear a certain sounds then they take off the blindfold and like to see certain lights and patterns and whatnot i feel like that cue is a way to kind of reset you to kind of reset you back to one so that when you're going in there you're kind of going in there and leaving your kind of old self behind and allowing yourself to just kind of immerse yourself in whatever you see around you not to be freaked out about people hooking up in the dark room not to be freaked out about this weird sculpture about how industrial it looks about the sounds coming at the speakers it just allows you to kind of put your best foot forward going in there and i feel like when people once they go in there because of the trepidation and the stress of queuing up you go in there and you absolutely let loose and i feel like that's probably the best example i think of a nightclub because most nightclubs in general don't have that kind of feeling most nightclubs are just kind of you know i don't know it's just a dark place you go and hang out but people on the dance floor of burka and the panorama bar they dance they absolutely dance you never see a bottle or a cup or a glass or a drink on the dance floor everyone's bumping and shaking taking the hips and swaying from left to right no one even at prime but no one's really actually just staring at the dj all the time they're just staring in different directions just having the time of their lives like it's absolutely magical i can't lie it's one of the most magical places to be to to be at in terms of a club space of course when it comes to djs playing specifically what i heard which i thought was really impressive was number one big up josie rebel as being a fellow uk person it was really nice and really kind of heartwarming to see somebody who i seen play in the uk in various different places from coming up to like now becoming a world-renowned dj to see her absolutely tear apart burkheim main room floor was absolutely special she tore it to flipping pieces people were legitimately convulsing when i was out there on the dance floor it was amazing to see so big up josie rebel the other person who I thought was amazing that I saw also play was Zakuti, somebody who I mentioned previously who's now a resident now of Panorama Bar in general. So to see her play um, was uh, incredible. She had loads of friends out there also that were kind of cheering her on and stuff. I kind of got to say hi to her for a little bit when she did come into one of the darkroom bits where it's got the air conditioning where I usually end up sitting and kind of regathering my thoughts. So that was cool to see her for a bit. Roy Perez after her was pretty decent. I think I spent most of my time in Panorama Bar to be fair. Roy Perez was pretty decent. I didn't see Boris or Carcita because I then went to go see Etap Kyle Fido. Um, I saw Marcel Dietman back to back with Miss Kitten or Kitten. Oh my God, what a good set. To have that mix between Marcel Dietman, what he plays, which, you'd, which you would say would be your typical techno, and then Kitten playing more so electro type was so, or electro type music was so amazing to hear. Sonically, really, really good. Stylistically, really good too, because they've got very different ways that they mix. Um, they've got very different ways that they kind of pick tunes in terms of their set. So that was pretty cool to see from afar, them working kind of hand in hand. Um, Virginia to close out Panorama Bar perfect but she's always been i think a little bit of an underrated dj overall maybe it's because she doesn't i mean i don't know i can't say enough i can't really read too much about i can't really read too much into it but just from the outside in as as female djs go i reckon she's definitely up there as one of the best in the business but i don't really see her getting spoken about the same way that our people don't get spoken about and i don't know if this is like a she does it on purpose because she doesn't want the fame and she kind of just wants to have like a very because that's the kind of thing i always kind of pictured in my head if i ever became a professional dj i'd want to have a very sort of like i wouldn't say middle of the road but a very considered career where i'd only play at maybe 60 clubs 
you know, around the world. I'd maybe pick 10 festivals that I really wanted to play at all the time. And I just keep recycling them every single year. But it wouldn't be this drive to make sure I get all the big, all the most biggest bookings and play the most far flung places. I don't care. I want to play the places that I respected, the places that I loved as a punter. I loved whatever as a DJ playing there. I love to play in front of the crowd. Like those are the places that I kind of play. And just, and I'd just, that'd be my kind of, my safe space, which is still an amazing career to have, to be able to play music in you know some of the best places in the world without having the pressure of being the big awakening festival type person is definitely great but virginia was flipping awesome so big up jennifer sorry big up jennifer big up virginia definitely that was great and then another one who i thought was really amazing who did something i'm kind of kind of quickly noticed i think a lot of people don't really know of was the xxx floor which i which i'm assuming if i'm not mistaken is the floor that they do um the party that's meant to, that's meant to be specifically for the gay crowd what is it called Oh, I forgot what the party is, but Bergheim have a particular night that they do. I think maybe it's once a year that's specifically for the gay community only, right? And they open up a specific part of the club, which is called, I forgot what it's called as well, the name, oh, it doesn't matter. But I've never been there. So they open up the entire Bergheim. Again, because usually I only go to Bergheim, main room floor in Panorama Bar. This time around, they had every single room of that place open. It was absolutely amazing to see. I walked around the entire space. Great. We went to the garden. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. But they got this other room in there that's that looks like it's out, it's out of a movie or something. Absolutely incredible. People dance on a bar. People dance on top of plinths and speakers. The DJ booth is up in like a cage thing. Like, it's incredible. Literally incredible. It might be one of the best spaces I've been to. I've never seen it in my entire life. And Pablo Boozy was playing there, right? And I've seen this guy play a few times on that station called Whore, how do you pronounce it? Hey, H-O-R, with a little with the little markings on top of the O. And he's mostly, I would say, to describe him, an, an Atello disco DJ type thing, right? And I've liked his sets on there. But I was also intrigued to see, like, how would he play in that kind of environment? How would that sound kind of go down? Because, again, when you think of Bergheim, you think of industrial, you think of, you know, really deep, heavy, hard, big room sort of techno. You don't really think of Atello disco. And let me tell you, Pablo Bozzi tore that room to pieces. To pieces. So much so that I lost a couple of my own possessions in that room. I'm not going to name them. <laughs> you know, if you know, you know. But it was an absolute vibe. It was so much fun. Like, ridiculously fun. And I would definitely go and see him um, live again. So definitely big up Pablo Buzzi when it comes to that sort of stuff. Really, really was one of my highlights in terms of going, especially for the space and everything else that included in there. But honestly, what a really great night. I'm not going to complain about that one. Then, moving on, another kind of um, one to kind of keep a note on, I'd imagine, just to say, because again, I was really pissed I didn't go to RSO Berlin. But I really recommend, if you go to Berlin, I really recommend to check out some of the more quote-unquote alternative clubs. And one of the best alternative clubs I found out there was this place called Same Heads, which is in Neuklund, which is effectively their version of like Dorsten, I would say, basically. And Same Heads basically reminded me of that like, the heydays of Alibi. Alibi was this famous dive bar in London, or sorry, in East London in Dorsten that I used to go to all the time. I basically used to live in there. I used to put, I used to run a club night in there. Like, I was flipping the greatest. I met some awesome people in there. Like just great, the greatest place ever, right? Hell, it's got some. It's got a really special place in my heart because, of course, I kind of you know, basically my entire personality was basically built and crafted in that space to a certain extent. And obviously, that kind of clubs in London, they've kind of gone, they've gone by the wayside through gentrification, through you know noise complaints, council stuff. That those clubs don't really exist anymore for the most part. We don't really have them, but they have this sort of version thing in um in in Berlin called Same Heads, and. If I'm not mistaken, it's actually set up by two British brothers. I remember watching an interview with them on YouTube years ago. And I've always wanted to go there, but I never have, I never can remember because I'm usually always too fucked up. But this time around, because I went there like an adult, I kind of spent most of my time not really drinking or getting high or anything. I kind of just spent my time eating and just kind of chilling out. So I was able to go there and I had a really, really fun time. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't know what the night was called. Um, it was sort of like a an arabian sort of kind of middle eastern electronic type music vibe there was only dj girl djs playing from what i could see um the crowd was extremely mixed like in terms of ages and races and backgrounds which i love i hate going to places that's, that's probably why i had a bit of an a bit of a 
sour taste in my mouth going to Bergheim that time because everyone's looked the same. Everyone's got the double sole Dr. Martens on. Everyone's wearing fucking black bikinis and black fish nets and stuff. It's just a bit boring, right? And jock straps, just like, okay, yawn. But I felt like in same heads, a lot of people had actual personality, were actually interesting people, actually had interesting things to say, did interesting things, blah, 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 blah. blah. And it was such a great vibe in there, honestly, to hear different bits of music that wasn't just techno, to see different people that wasn't just a typical sort of person you'd see playing the nightclub and just in general the space is really cool so from the pictures i've got listed up in here they're a bit crappy but the pictures basically show you type what it kind of looks like so downstairs you've got this sort of room right where it's sort of like just got your standard dj booth here with like a, i guess the back bit where they just put their stuff and whatnot and that's a small basement room with like kind of the bar towards the back but then on the top floor it's basically like a standard bar right it's like a classic bar type vibe right and they serve you really cool cheap drinks and whatnot and it's just a cool easy place to hang out it really is really kitschy looking um oddly you know decorated and furnished and whatnot very unassuming from the outside you pass it, it looks like a furniture vintage type store it's really really cool and i think after a certain time they obviously charge for entry but i think before nine i think i'm not too sure it's free after that you have to pay like nine euros but honestly it was legitimately one of my finds of the trip that i went to and again i've known about this club for many many years and i've never got around to going to it because i just spent most of my time going to legitimate like techno raves and whatnot but this was really 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 fun like i can't kind of stress how fun this was and i really had a great time going there so definitely recommend going to same heads if you haven't already checked it out so definitely a recommendation that i put on there in the list and then of course lastly the turkish food there is absolutely phenomenal like it literally puts the turkish food that we have here in london to shame even though we have really good turkish food here in london i feel like the levels of turkish food in Turk in berlin are just on another level every place you go to especially even the shitty ones they're effectively our version of like a seven is that like their version of like a five but i was able to go to a pretty decent one in the middle of like cop bus or tour that i think might be called tech or something i think it was called tech tech mir tech mir berlin uh turkish i think it was tech mir it was super super tasty really really cheap uh the duna is it tech mir or tech mir tech mir i don't doesn't matter whatever it may be if i find out what the name is i'll put it in the description but definitely a really fun time and i definitely recommend to go check it out if you haven't already